I'm sure there's a great, great many of you who have uh, uh, questions. Uh, so, some way we'll be walking the mic. Thank you. Uh, thank you both. Uh, um, I have a couple questions. I have no time, so I'm not going to ask all of them. Um, but I first want to just make a comment, observation. Um, just thinking about the contested legacy of uh, Malcolm X. Uh, as you were speaking, I recall someone from Al Qaeda calling him uh, Uncle Tom. And then I thought about uh, Eric Holder upon transitioning out, encouraging people to read his autobiography. And so, amongst other things um, that popped in my mind, that was uh, one thing or two things. Um, my two questions I want to ask, uh, speaking on the legacy of Malcolm X, I was waiting for y'all to talk about uh, his influence on encouraging people to embrace Islam or spirituality. And you did kind of talk about it in the context of uh, this conflict around music, um, but I don't know if there's anything beyond that conflict you would add. Uh, and then the second question is just related to um, the need uh, sort of articulated around uh, having a moderate hip-hop or more so a moderate Malcolm and to what extent does the work by um, Manny Marvel do that? Because uh, there was a huge critique uh, of it in the live reinvention um, by Professor Burleson um, Ball. Well, I'm going to be real quick. I'm going to be real quick. Let the real, let the real man set up and do the popcorn, as James Brown would say. Um, yeah, you know, in regard to the first, that, that's a great point. Um, when I think about not simply because they're related, the moderate Muslim identity that Malcolm would unleash, but it cannot be denied in, in regard to Islam that nobody can listen to and engage Malcolm X and think that he's doing anything except bringing the ferocity of a of a fierce of, of the ferocity of a critical intelligence to bear upon social injustice and the beauty of a spiritual intensity to bear upon suffering. And when you, you know, I, I'm th I, I think of uh, Ossie Davis's, you know, magnificent um, eulogy for him. What, what did you see in Malcolm but beauty and power and love and struggle against oppression? Um, so I think it's, in other words, it's an incredibly powerful confirmation of the redemptive value of Islam and what it might mean uh, to follow it. I know that Hussam would have uh, much more to say. Um, <clears throat> in regard to the second point you were making, um, what, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I I happen to think that that Manning Marable helped radicalize our understanding of. Malcolm X and therefore appropriated the radical dimensions of Malcolm. It's not a moderate, it's moderate. I, you know, I read these books, you know, the live reinvention and so on, and there were some, look, there's some very provocative essays, but I think the ideological acts to grind against Manning Marable uh, revealed some of the deficit of critical analysis and thinking because at this level, Malcolm became a substitute and iconic figure that had been elevated to such a point that he was incapable of critical analysis or the very humanization that he, in, that he insisted upon. The humanizing impulse, not the moderating impulse, the humanizing impulse, suggesting Malcolm vis-a-vis -vis other kind of touchstones of gender, and, but especially sexual, uh, in nature that people find it impossible to to fathom. And I think that the bravery and courage of Manning Marable was to give us not a moderate Malcolm X, but a humane Malcolm X that I think will last far longer and be of far more use uh, than other versions of Malcolm that have been generated.